Hi, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be building the ultimate Agile dashboard. This video is sponsored by Custom Charts, so please make sure you check out their product in the link below. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira and let's create the ultimate Agile dashboard using custom charts for Jira. All right, so we are in a dashboard. This is a brand new dashboard it's called Executive Dashboard. You can call it whatever you want. And if you haven't already, you're going to want to make sure you enable custom charts for Jira. This is really, you can kind of get most of this done with just the out of the box stuff. But to get the true Agile uh, dashboard that we're going to be creating here, you're going to want to make sure you, you have custom charts for Jira installed. Check out the video. I have instructions on how to enable that plugin. There's also a link below to the marketplace where you can go and get yourself uh, custom charts for Jira installed in your Jira. Once you have that, you're going to basically add a gadget and we're going to be working with the very basics here. We're just going to go, come down to custom charts and we're going to add. Now we are going to be building seven different gadgets to help tell the whole story. So go ahead and add a couple. You can either add them one at a time or you can just go ahead and click add seven times. And you're gonna wanna organize these in such a way so that you actually take advantage of this multi-column thing here. So I don't want, I don't like doing this like all ahead of the time because there's it gets kind of finicky at the beginning. So we're gonna make this look prettier. First, I'm gonna create each of the gadgets and then we're gonna kind of make this dashboard look a little bit prettier. So we'll start with creating the very first gadget, which is we want to see all the issues by priority. And I want to see every new issue that is basically coming in. So I want every issue. I want all the priorities, whether it's the highest, medium, low, lowest, high, whatever priority is, I want to see a breakdown and decomposition of those priorities. So let's go take a look at how to build that. Okay. So for that first gadget, we're going to build, we are going to create a tile chart that is essentially going to show me a breakdown of all the priorities. As you can see here under chart type, I I have selected tile chart. I want to see this in these little squares. So this is the way I want to represent this. You can obviously pick whatever other uh, chart type you want, but I like to see the little square formation with the number inside of it. Next, you pick your source. I'm just picking one of my Jira projects, but you can do this however you want. You can use a simple search gadget or you can pick whatever project you want or a filter. It's up to you but just make sure you go get some issues. Next, I am charting by priority. This is the most important part. I want to make sure I see a complete breakdown of all of my issues based on their priority. Because the way I like to plan my projects and the way I like to execute is I take care of the highest priority because highest priority to me usually means if I don't do this item, something bad is going to happen. And so I don't want bad things to happen. And so I am going to tackle those highest priorities first, whether it's a bug, whether it's a story, whatever the type may be, whatever's ranked the highest and it has that highest priority. That means that that is the most critical thing that your team should be working on. And so I am, I want to visualize this. I want to see, okay, so based out of all the work that I have, what should my team be focusing on first? And so I'm leveraging these tiles here with these numbers to essentially guide me. And so creating this tile chart is super easy. As you saw, all I did was click tile, pick a source, and I want to chart by priority. Now, the only other thing that I would recommend you change is these percentages are going to be a percentage based off this total number. It might help. It might not help for my particular case. I just care about the count. I just want to know how many issues are the highest, how many issues are high and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to toggle that off. And so I, I came down to the display options and I come down to display here. You have, the, you have the option to show the count and the percent, the just the count, just the percent. And so I'm going to leave just the count. When you're satisfied with that, just hit search. And now you're going to have a complete breakdown of all your priorities across your project so that you can tackle basically the highest, right? So anytime that I'm planning my sprints, anytime that I'm triaging or adjudicating what goes into my sprint, I'm going to come in here and make sure that I have all the right acceptance criteria, the right everything that my team needs to succeed to tackle these highest priority issues first. So that's the very first gadget. Next, let's go look at things by release. Okay, so the next chart that we're going to display is going to be our fixed version breakdown. And so in here, what we're looking at is we are going to be using a 2D stacked bar chart as my chart type. Same project from before. Just make sure you have a project, whatever project you want. 
And now over here, we're going to do a group by issue type because for the breakdown of this, I want to see by each release, what kind of issues are going into it? Because when you're planning out your releases, you want to have a healthy number of features, a healthy number of tech debt, and a healthy number of bugs that are going into each release. And so this graph here is going to really help us visualize that decomposition of what the heck is going into this release and what's that balance of that breakdown of the different issue types. And so this chart here, when we group by the issue type and we chart by the fixed version, you're going to see that each column is my versions. Now you'll see a couple of different versions here that I don't want to show. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide the segment here under none because I don't want to see anything that's under none. I don't want to see these quarterly ones. I just want to see my next software releases, which is going to be 1011 and 20. And so these are the different releases that my teams are working on right now. And I just want to see a decomposition. I want to see how many bugs they're working on, how many uh, features and how many tech decks, right? And so I can see that by essentially color coding these things. And if I want to change the colors, I can come over here to the right, change the color so that things look better, basically however I want them to look. But you can change your colors to pretty much any RGB color you want. As long as you have the hex value, you can put it in there. But this is a pretty good representation of by release, what does this, what is this release made up of? How many bugs do we have? How many epics do we have? How many stories went into the release? And so this is a really powerful way to visualize that decomposition, that breakdown of every release, and it's in a stacked way where you can see this really, really important information. Okay, this next chart that we're creating is another 2D stacked chart. We are going to be picking this 2D stacked bar chart. Um, again, pick your project, but this time what we're doing is we're grouping by epic name and we're charting by the fixed version. And what this chart is telling me is for each release that I'm working on, what features, okay? At this point, I don't care about the tech debt. I don't care about the bugs, but I want to know what epics, what major items, what major functionality capabilities or whatever you want to call it, what is going into each one of my releases? Because when I'm communicating to my customer, I can basically put some dates on my releases so I know when that release is going to be delivered to that customer. And I can uh, basically articulate in a very graphical way, explain to my end users, to my customers, hey, this vanity thing is part of this release and it's going to go out by this date. And you can see if, if it flows into another release, if there's other releases that are going to be dealing with aspects of that epic, we can see that flow over. But essentially this graph here is going to allow us to basically show every epic that we are working on. And it's going to allow us to illustrate the epics that are going to go into every single one of those releases so that we can, again, at a very higher level, be able to illustrate and communicate what is what are we strategically planning on releasing. This goes beyond just the stories that the individual contributors are creating. This is more from a holistic level. What are we putting into each release from a very methodically perspective, right? This is very strategic, very top down. And we're trying to show that breakdown to our executive team, to whoever we're presenting this to. We're trying to basically do a good job at presenting. Okay. So for each release, you should expect these functionalities or these capabilities or these features to be released to the customer. Okay. The next chart that we're going to be working on is not necessarily a breakdown of all the statuses, but I'm very interested in seeing all my blocked issues. As a scrum master, you're continuously hearing during your daily scrums, what did I do yesterday? What am I working on today? And any impediments. And those impediments usually mean blocked to me. So this particular project that I'm working out of has a status of blocked. And I just want to show all of the issues that are in that blocked status. Because as a scrum master, if I can visualize those impediments, then I can now very strategically go into it. And then from a tactical perspective, be able to now go take action and remove those impediments from my team. And so the easiest way to do that is we're going to, in our chart type, we're going to select the tile, go to the project that actually has these blocked issues. And if you don't have a block status, maybe you have a block priority. This is going to work with either block priority or block status. But if you just are depending on the blocks and block by relationship, this isn't going to work. So make sure you're using either a status of blocked or a priority of block. That's the way I like to do it. And then I'm going to chart by my status, right? Just because in this particular case, I am using the status of blocked. And what the only modification I'm going to do here is I don't care to see the done. I don't care to see the to do. I don't care to see the in test. I just want to see the blocked. And from here, I don't care to see the percentage. I just want to know how many blocked issues we have. 
and I need a link so that I can go and address those impediments. Now, this is one way of doing it. There's other ways of, of basically showing this, but I feel like this is the easiest way where I'm just gonna hide all the other statuses that I don't care for. You could, of course, add basically a micro JQL where you're gonna go get pretty much your blocked issues. Now, another thing that we can do if we wanted to is essentially sort it by created date so you can see the new blockers as they pop up. But in this particular case, I'm just gonna leave the blocked issues here. I just wanna see the total number of blocked issues so that I can then go take action as a Scrum Master and start removing some impediments for my team. And for this final chart, I'm actually gonna combine a couple of different charts that I was originally planning on showing you that were gonna be separate. I'm just gonna do it in one fail chart here so that you, you can just visualize it all in one place. So we are gonna be selecting a 1D table chart here. Pick your source again. But this time we're charting by the assignee. I wanna start by each member of my Scrum team, I wanna start seeing a couple of different uh, key metrics that I'm very interested in. First, I'm gonna be interested in the breakdown of assignee. So just by clicking on this assignee, for each of all the work that's in my, in whatever source that I selected, whether it's the whole project, or this is where tying back into a simple search sketch is gonna really help, because then if I filter by a release or by a sprint, I can then manipulate my other chart so that it just displays that pertinent information based on that gadget. In this particular case, I'm just gonna keep it super basic. I'm taking the basic, just the, the whole Jira project, all 24 issues in here, and I'm breaking it down by assignee. Now this is my own personal Jira and it's just me by myself, so you're not gonna see other people in this project, but this you would expect to see pretty much a breakdown of every assignee relative to your source criteria. So that's one thing that I'm seeing is the breakdown of the assignees. Now, the next thing I want to do is I essentially want to add another segment over here and I want to start adding uh, columns. I want to start adding an extra column because I see the percent. I don't care about the percent. I just want to know how many issues are assigned to each person. I'm going to come to add column and now I'm going to do an average. I want to do the average of story points. And so by each individual, I want to see how many story points are tackling. Again, this number gets manipulated. If you're tying it back into that simple search, it's probably going to give you greater value out of this metric because for a more specific view it'll tell you that new average but in this particular case just across the whole project i want to know how many average story points this person has and that's pretty much it i can basically combine my assignee breakdown and then my story point average breakdown by each user so that i can get that insight and and have a breakdown not just of the assignees but also the story points in one view so that's pretty much it for this chart. And so at this point, I've added pretty much all the charts that I'm gonna add to my Agile dashboard. And I just kinda wanna show you what it looks like. I'm gonna hit publish real quick. I'm gonna, actually, I'm just gonna remove this. I'm gonna make sure that I have these all kind of like stacked and I don't need this last one anymore because I was able to do two for one on the last one. And so now you can organize these. You can drag and drop your your gadgets and your, or your charts however you wanna see them the way that basically makes the most sense for you. And when you're done, just click this done button. You can then share this executive dashboard or this agile dashboard, whatever you want to call it. You can share it with other folks in your team. Make sure that people have access to the filters or to the project themselves. Otherwise, they're not going to see a whole lot of information. But this is a great view of being able to come in here every single day. And now you have real metrics from an agile perspective that you can then take real actions on, right? So this was the intent of this video is not just to build any dashboard, but build the dashboard that I typically use on the, on the ground floor with all the troops and I'm basically coordinating our strategies. And so these are the kind of metrics that I'm typically using day to day to make sure that my teams are tracking to the right direction, that they have the right traction, they have the right support from the Scrum Master perspective. And so I just want you to kind of experiment with these, try different ones out. Let me know in the comment section, what's your favorite chart? What are you tracking? What kind of metrics are you using from an agile team? This is just an example. This is not a silver bullet. This is not all the options you have. Um, we can go crazy and actually make like eight hours worth of content just talking about dashboards and metrics. But these are just some of the key basic things that you're gonna wanna see as a Scrum Master so you can, again, strategically help your team get some traction, make progress, and make sure that you're uh, removing any impediments and that at the end of the day, you're ultimately delivering that high value to that customer. Anyways, that's it for this video. 
If you found it valuable, make sure you drop a like. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you want to share the kind of metrics you're collecting, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I can work with uh, custom charts here and create those metrics for you if you don't know how to make them. But again, these are just some basic things to kind of get you going in the right direction, but you're only limited by your imagination. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.